Cyclone Mandus producing heavy rain over Sri Lanka on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for December 8th. So we finally get a name for that storm that we've been tracking for over a day now, approaching the coast of Sri Lanka and eventually southern India. It is the 90th storm of the year so far, and it's code blue on Tikos, our operation status. Uh, Mandus expected to impact the southern part of India eventually after uh, potentially moving through Sri Lanka. It's uh, the Atlantic though that we're also looking at with a 40% chance uh, for that extra tropical system that's trying to wrap itself together but chances appear to be fading. In the Eastern Pacific there is nothing currently active, no areas of interest and we're really not expecting anything to form now at this stage. There may still be one or two rumblings about the Central Pacific but the Eastern Pacific I think it's safe to say is done. And in the Western Pacific we've got this area of interest which has a 50% chance now from our Cyclone Analyst team despite its very limited model support at the moment but it certainly has a chance to develop as it approaches the Philippines as we often see at this time of year. But in the Indian Ocean that's where most of the activity is right now in the form of Tropical Storm Mandus, certainly a threat to the southern part of India and Sri Lanka, gradually moving a little bit to the west-northwest now. That northwesterly turn has happened, it was moving west yesterday, uh, so that's changed a little bit and is starting to follow that forecast. Well then, looking at the satellite imagery across the Atlantic right now, you can still see that system in the central uh, part of the ocean that's still trying to get itself together and it's trying to certainly get moisture around all its sides and uh, not have an exposed centre, which is what we were looking at on yesterday's bulletin. In the eastern Pacific, uh, things still looking very dreary uh, with dry air dominating a few little areas of thunderstorms but really nothing very much at all. So let's look at the main feature Cyclone Mandus and you can see how it's been developing over the last 24 hours or so from the Indian satellites. And you can see on the eastern side that it was struggling with wind shear for quite a while but it really is starting to blow up lots of convection to fight off all of that wind shear really getting some very cold cloud top temperatures and underneath all those clouds particularly on the western side there uh, some significant rainfall is starting to encroach the northern and eastern coastline of Sri Lanka named Mandus earlier and many argued that it was a very late designation by the Indian Meteorological Department uh, it is now a named storm but you can still see that jagged edge there that uh, razor blade effect that you just saw briefly there that's a big sign of heavy wind shear on that eastern side really fascinating to watch when you look at it from the infrared uh, enhancement angle but still extremely deep cloud tops in that storm Western Pacific, you can take a look at this system, that invest that really is uh, starting to rotate quite a bit. Very, very broad. Um, not much convection around it just yet, but interesting to see how it's moving right now. And I imagine the pressure is already deepening in that system and certainly has the potential to develop as it continues northwesterly. Interesting appearance. A wide shot of the Indian Ocean, quite clearly Mandus is the main talking point, um, covering quite a lot of the Bay of Bengal and some peripheral clouds reaching the western coast of India, not far from Mumbai now, and in the southern hemisphere looking pretty quiet. In the Australian region you can see here not much happening at all actually, uh, a front moving through the east coast uh, that just uh, moved out over Brisbane, and uh, a few little thunderstorms not far from Fiji. But generally, a fairly quiet picture down in the South Pacific. So let's check our sea surface temperatures. In the Pacific Ocean, the eastern part, you can see there those temperatures are still okay near Hawaii. And towards the coast of Mexico, temperatures still dropping off a little bit further. The Atlantic, uh, for that potential subtropical cyclone, temperatures are still round and about there uh, for a little while longer yet. Uh, before it really enters the colder temperatures. Uh, but in the Caribbean Sea, if we do see any late season activity, well, who knows, it might be in that area still 28 degrees plus. 
Indian Ocean, temperatures really starting to decrease off the eastern coast of India, and that's where Mandus is heading. Models suggesting that it will weaken substantially before it makes landfall still, although the models have trended upwards a little bit, now calling for a minimal tropical storm landfall. In the Philippine Sea, still very warm waters there, pushing close to 30 degrees Celsius as on the approach to the Philippines for that potential tropical cyclone, so certainly ample opportunity uh, for significant intensification to typhoon strength uh, potentially, and obviously high rain amounts uh, could be contained inside that. Um, anomalies, it is above average in the Pacific area, the South China Sea particularly, the Eastern Pacific quite below average, La Nina effect still in force, and the Gulf of Mexico and the subtropical Atlantic well above average for what it's worth, might not be worth anything but certainly might be trying to help that system in the Central Atlantic. Uh, the oceanic heat content is really fizzling out now in the Caribbean Sea, there's still a few hot pockets but it is starting to fade away. Eastern Pacific hardly anything left and in the Western Pacific there's still a few spots here and there in the uh, tropical zone. A lot of it though is in the equatorial zone south of uh, 10 to 5 degrees north. Well let's check the GFS model and this is what it shows for this Atlantic system there. I would suggest that it's probably only about 12 hours left for this potential system to form. That's why chances are currently fading before it becomes an enormous extra tropical cyclone. Um, if it isn't, if it uh, doesn't, if it changes at all, uh, it, of course it could be extra tropical the whole way through, and then it will blow up and develop some really strong winds, possibly getting up to 100 miles per hour, and then turning northwards. All of that out to sea, although the Azores may get some gale force winds. Western Pacific, the GFS is one of the models, in fact the only model really that's uh, really going for this system developing into a tropical storm just north of Sama near Catanduanes and then moving northwards out to sea as a significant typhoon getting probably to category 2 status but its formation only really happens as it starts to leave the island which means that the wind threat really won't be there it's going to be a big rain threat though if that does happen and even if it doesn't develop uh, it could still deliver lots of rainfall which we'll look at in a moment. Indian Ocean, here's this system again, Mandus, moving inland now near Chennai uh, as a weak tropical storm around about 40 mile per hour winds, 65 kilometers per hour. That's probably what we're looking at for landfall now, uh, and it could, according to GFS model there, briefly reach hurricane equivalent status there. You saw that little yellow area. Uh, that could be 75 mile per hour winds, 120 kilometers per hour, which would be really interesting to watch. Uh, not sure whether that will happen yet, but certainly an interesting thing to see. In the longer range, day 5 to 10, uh, that typhoon fizzles out quite quickly and then off it goes, its remnant energy becoming an extratropical cyclone later on in the, northern, uh, in the northern Pacific Ocean and then off it goes eastward across the international dateline. So after that in the Pacific there, really can't see much else forming and that probably will be it for the year. And where else do we have for the 5 to 10 day period? Well, it's back to the Indian Ocean again because there's potentially another system behind Mandus that could start to form in very low latitudes approaching Sri Lanka there. That clearly is a tropical storm as we get towards the end of that 10 day period and a landfall in northern Sri Lanka, quite rare to have storm landfalls there, but it can happen. I remember the uh, 2001 particularly um, and certainly uh, uh, this particular area is susceptible to big damages from these storms in the southern regions. Well that's all the serious stuff done with, you can scan that barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store and you might still get your delivery before Christmas, although I can't control that. Uh, we have all of our usual items as well as our still waiting for Hone t-shirt and you can request animations, full season and individual storm animations bespoke made for you. Well then in the Silly Range, this is day 10 to 16, we're looking down into the southern Indian Ocean. To be honest, it's not really that silly, but we could see three tropical cyclones there in that long range. We just call it the Silly Range because it's not really anything that you should be taking seriously. Uh, that system there, the significant cyclone in the middle, getting to category 3 status. All of this, these three cyclones there, two on either side of it, very plausible stuff. Whether it will happen or not, you got to take it with a big grain of salt. Um, uh, but that is what the very long range is currently saying. 
Well, this day we had a real late season uh, typhoon on our hands. On December 8th, 2002, Typhoon Pong Sona was making landfall in northern Guam as a Category 4 on the Sapphire Simpson scale, a very powerful typhoon, and then continued northwestwards. Um, I can't remember whether this version of Pongsona was retired or whether it was a later one, but it was certainly a bad storm for the northern part of Guam, which is where it made landfall round about 6 to 12 Z, which would have been in the afternoon to evening hours on that day, local time. Back to today, 20 years later, we have the Atlantic naming list, which might be finished, might not be, but the next name is Owen. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Seymour, and in the Central Pacific, we are still waiting for Hone. In the Western Pacific, the next name now is Prakar. We've been waiting a while for that one, actually, now. And in the North Indian Ocean, now that we've got Mandus, the next name is Mocha. 90 storms have formed so far around the world. We're just two off the annual annual average, and it looks like we're going to get there. In the Australian region, the next name is Darien, the Southwest Indian Ocean, Chaniso, and in the South Pacific, it will be Harley. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night. <laughs>